All right, so we've got ourselves some more NHL trade rumors to discuss, and this one is actually a pretty big deal in my opinion, because the player we're talking about here is indeed somebody who is quite the talent. He's a legitimate NHL I don't want to say, like, superstar, but right underneath that tier. He's a guy whom pretty much every single NHL team would improve if they had this kind of player. And the fact of the matter is, he's out here on a Nashville Predators team that is just really bad and is apparently looking to trade anybody and everybody not named Pekka Rene, Roman Yossi, or Philip Forsberg. What is up, viewers? The Washington Field Arcs back here, and today we are talking about Matthias Ekholm. In this article on thefourthperiod.com, this is David Penyota's website, he's an NHL analyst and insider with connections as well as his own radio show, and on his website there was this article published yesterday. The Montreal Canadiens are eyeing defenseman Matthias Ekholm. Now, it's not even just Montreal, that is being written about here because it also says halfway through the article that several teams have also called the Predators about Matthias Ekholm with the Jets, Bruins, and Flyers among them. So what we're going to do in this video is just go over the profile here, talk about the kind of guy we have on our hands, and talk about the individual situations with each of the teams that are mentioned in this piece. Now, Matthias Ekholm is a guy whom, whenever I think about, I always think about that 2017 Nashville Predators team that went to the Stanley Cup Finals. Now, we all know how that ended. There was a terrible referee blowing the whistle when there wasn't really a stoppage of play and the goalie was down and out it should have probably been a goal and I know that Penguins fans would say oh but we would have won anyway in overtime or in game seven or whatever that's not the point the point is I remember the 2017 finals because there was a huge mishap with the referees with the Predators but aside from that Whenever I think of the Nashville Predators of 2017, the first thing that stands out to me is always that insanely good top four defensive core. A core that said to the rest of the league, hey, we are the best four defensemen to clog up your lineup in the entire NHL. P.K. Subban, Ryan Ellis, Roman Yossi, and Matthias Ekholm. Now, P.K. Subban, you laugh at that name today, but back in 2017, this guy willed his team to making the Stanley Cup Finals. And the other guys behind him, Yossi, Ellis, Ekholm, all as equally beneficial in that team's success. And Ekholm this year is a guy who, as a big six foot four, big shot kind of guy on the left side, is at 10 points in 20 games, so that's very good for him playing on a bad Predators team this year. He's at half a point a game. But as a big guy on the blue line, he's got some really good puck mobility skills. He facilitates play well, and he is just an anchor there for the Preds and the rest of their blue line. However, the Predators are pretty bad. And Matthias Ekholm, at 30 years old, is making $3.75 million as an AAV, and his contract expires next season. So, with the way the Nashville Predators are out here today, with a poor team and a guy who is pretty gosh darn good, making a small amount of money, and who expires next year, there's been the talk of other teams going out there and trading for this guy in order to give the Nashville Predators some youth, some prospects, some picks that they can use next year and beyond. Because, you know, they should be entering that rebuild stage, shouldn't they? So, for Matthias Ekholm, we have the Canadians up first, mentioned in this article in the fourth period. And the article talks about how apparently the Canadians were actually in this before Ben Chirot took out his hand the other night against JT Miller in a fight with the Vancouver Canucks. So that's kind of on the back burner there. Even if Chirot was still in the lineup, it appears the Canadians would have still had interest in Matthias Ekholm. The article says this, Canadians GM Mark Bergevin bolstered his decor during the offseason with the acquisitions of Edmondson and Romanov. However, the Habs believe they have an opportunity to challenge for the Stanley Cup this season, and adding a player of Ekholm's experience and capabilities would further strengthen Montreal's blue line. And you know what? That's honestly true. Matthias Ekholm, if he goes over onto the Habs, if I had to say this myself, is he better than Ben Sherratt? I think... Habs fans' default answer would probably be yes, just from the way that Sherrod has been playing the past few games, we kind of know how he's been playing. Is he better than Edmondson? Honestly, I'd say so. I'd rather have Ekholm on my team than Edmondson. They're both big guys, they're both rocks on the blue line, but Ekholm to me is a lot more safer than Edmondson, if you get what I mean. Then you also have the other left-handed D-man. Is he better than Romanov? Well, Romanov's young, 
Gonna give him the benefit of the doubt there. Mete, I'd rather have at home than Mete. So that's really up in the air. So it would make sense if the Canadians are going out there trying to acquire a guy like Matthias Ekholm. As for the Boston Bruins, they're in a position where... Ah, man, with the loss of Zdeno Chara, the loss of Tori Krug, we knew this entire time that the Bruins were going out there looking for defense. We saw all the rumors for Noah Hannafin earlier in the year. We saw the rumors for Oliver ekman Larson before that. So... Matthias Ekholm, if this guy's available on the market, the fact that the Bruins apparently have shown interest, that is not surprising in the slightest for me. Because even though the Bruins are in a spot in the NHL standings that is actually pretty good, they're up here fourth in the East, they're just barely edging on to that final playoff spot. Now, right now, at the time of this recording, they are three points ahead of the Flyers with the same amount of games played, but you do everything you can to help secure your spots, right? And so, for Boston, it would make a whole bunch of sense if they wanted to get a guy whom I would probably say would be one of, if not their best, defenders on the left side if they acquired him by default. Next up, the Philadelphia Flyers, they are right behind the Bruins in that Eastern Division playoff race. They're in a spot where they're three points behind, but they do have games in hand over the Penguins, the Caps, and the Islanders. So, is there a move that says an Ekholm-like player would be a fit on their blue line? Now, Philly has always kind of had, in my opinion, a very good, very capable blue line as well, a young blue line too at that, that it was looking to get better as they got older. But Annette Holmes, a guy who comes in and he helps out today with some really good services and some really good puck facilitating play. So it would make sense why they would be involved too. In fact, it makes sense why any team would be involved. But for Philly, they're right there in that race with the Bruins. Whoever gets this guy, if he is one of those two teams, the other would probably just be fuming just to see the other team go out there and acquire this kind of guy. And finally, the Winnipeg Jets. They're in a position where I guess they could still use some defense. Like, come on, you've got guys like Nathan Bully you being big minute guys on the Jets, and you can tell from Jets fans' reactions just how good he has been this season. But for Sheveldayov and his squad, the big problem has always been throughout these conversations, the quarantine. The fact that this is a team over the border, it's not in America, they have their own plans and they have their own protocols. If you get a guy from the other divisions, they have to quarantine for two weeks, you won't see them on the ice, probably for like another extra week beyond that because you still have all the other traveling stuff to go through. So, Matthias Ekholm's a guy whom, if you want to actually make a trade for, you're gonna have to do it early. Like, you cannot wait until the very last second to try to make a deal like this if you are a Winnipeg Jets team that's looking to go out there and make a splash in the playoffs because... Let's say you acquire Ekholm, and all of a sudden your team starts sucking again. Let's say by the time Ekholm actually suits up, you're dead last in the North, out of a playoff spot. What are you going to do then? Is that trade going to be seen as a win now? Well, I don't know. It depends on what you give up. And in terms of what you give up, this is what the article speculates. Ekholm's price tag is believed to be high, and it could include a first-round draft pick. Though some pundits believe a second-round pick and at least one other piece could entice the Predators to pull the trigger. So, it seems like it's a lot of future for now, isn't it? Because even though you're going to go out there and acquire this guy, he's been good, he's a Stanley Cup finalist, he's experienced, he's 30 years old, and his contract expires next year. He'll be 31 then, and he'll be in a spot where, with all this experience and all this great play on the Predators of good, like in 2017, and the Predators of bad, like 2021, he's going to have that resume that says, yeah, I'm good, I'm established. Give me my money. I need that money. I really do. I need that money to pay my bills, the electric bill, the internet bill. He's got the right to say that. He is in a spot where he might be getting the last pro contract he ever has as a hockey player. He'll probably want to go long. He'll probably want to go somewhat expensive. A lot more than $3.75 million per season because he's been on this contract since... 2016-17 before they made the finals. So it's been a long time coming here for Matthias Ekholm, and he honestly does have the opportunity to ask for a boatload of money. Just take a look at the point production from this guy, man. 33 points, 68 games last year, 44 and 80 the year before that, 34 and 81. And the fact is, he's not even really a guy who's defined by the point production. He's just a good all-round defender. So, if you're a fan of the Habs, the Bruins, the Jets, or the Flyers, let me know in the comments what is the most that you would be willing to give up for Matthias Ekholm. And furthermore, do you actually think this kind of guy would serve a purpose on your team? Is it worth it to go out there and make a trade for a guy who fits the profile we described in this video? Tell me in the comments, because I'm certainly interested in hearing the different fan base perspectives, because obviously, you know, this channel has a lot of Habs fans on it. But... 
we do make our fair share of videos about the Bruins and the Jets and the Flyers as well, so I am very much welcoming all the discussion in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this Vidisraj Trolls 99. And bye. <laughs>